Um, Garrett, your question is how do you show the detail of the slab components of the ceiling? Uh, Frank, is, is would it be worth asking, um, turning on Garrett's microphone, actually asking him direct to explain what he means? Uh, yeah. Garrett, see. would you like to do that? Because I don't understand your question when you say the detail of the slab components. Yep, he's unmuted. Garrett, are you, did you want to ask me that question straight off? Okay. Hello? Can you hear me? Yep, yep, I can hear you. Oh, yeah, there you go. Okay. Well, you've been uh, constructing a slab on your little project before um, this drawing came up, and uh, you also added a ceiling. And you're using um, a slab as well with um, several components. There it is. And that's it, yes. So I was wondering how the components were um, defined to get this um, construction done and to have the, the inner wall component um, adjust itself. The inner wall component um, adjusts itself automatically based on the components of the slab. Yes. So let me go back to the slab. Okay. That's it. I would I would love to see the, the details of the slab components for this ceiling construction. Okay, I think that's it. So first of all, the one of these components has the datum height. So that's the height it's measured to. And I think I've used eight feet here for the slab. Then, if we look at the timber structure component, I've chosen the timber construction component to stop at the outer face of the core wall. So it doesn't go across the cavity, it doesn't go across the cladding, but it does sit completely on the wall that I defined as the core. Now I did say earlier on that, that walls and slabs work together. So in your wall, you have to define a part of that wall to be the structural part or the core of the wall. Then you can set another component to stop on the inner face of the wall. Now I could, I could, let's change this and have a bit of fun with it. Let's change it to the inner face of the core wall. Now that should have updated that. It did. If you have a look, Garrett, then what's happened is my uh, the bit that supports my ceiling. At the, we've got a system here we use called Rondo Battens. But my battens have caused the inner core of my wall to come down lower. I don't know if you can see that change. But it, there's going to be a lot of interaction between walls and slabs and you're going to have to get your slab and wall systems working correctly and then it'll work very well I think. Are there, uh, Garrett, did that answer your question? Absolutely. Sweet, thanks very much. Thank you very Frank, much. Frank, if you could turn off his um, microphone I think that'll be good. It's off. So what's left Frank? Have we, um, have we covered most of the topics? Yeah, I think uh, I think we answered all the questions pretty clearly. Actually, Sam uh, Sam Corchado has got a question about textures on walls. If you wanted to uh, address that, well, you can either apply textures to the overall wall, or you can apply textures to the component of the wall. So, for example, in my wall, I've got a, an exterior cladding and an interior lining. As you create the the walls components, you can use the components to to determine the textures. So in the setup of the wall dialog box, when you create a wall style, you can select a component and say, you've got brick. You can select another component and you can say, you've got wallpaper. 
and then, then you've just got to make sure you draw your walls the right way around so that the brick goes on the outside if that's what you want and the wallpaper is on the inside if, or the paint finishes on the inside. If you make a mistake on setting up walls, there are eight that walls, wall styles and slab styles are a resource. So if you make a mistake when you're setting up, then thanks for coming Christian. Nice to see you again. Thanks for thanks for being there. Um, the answer if you make a mistake in setting up your timber ceilings or your, your slab styles or your wall styles, you can easily edit them in the um, resource browser. Just a right mouse click edit and you can add extra components, you can fix components. Uh, while I was setting up this demonstration I used this a lot until I um, you know, learned a little bit more about making them do what I wanted to do. Well, well answer the question. I guess that answered the question. <laughs> oh, okay. by, the, by the way, Scott, when you edit the wall style or the slab style in the resource browser, it updates all the wall styles or slab styles in your document. Now, because slab styles and wall styles are, are resource based, of course, you can move them from file to file. And you can also set up a library of slab styles and a library of wall styles. And that's certainly what you should be doing. It'll, if you set up a library of these styles, because now you've got textiles, so you should have a library of textiles, a library of tiles, a library of um, textures. It'll really speed up the way you work in Vectorworks if you set up your libraries correctly. Frank, do you have any um, good renderings that you've found on the internet that we could perhaps show at the last for the last thing? Uh, yeah, actually, I uh, I found two. I mean, it it only came out yesterday, so I was able to find two. Let me uh, switch over here, show a couple of renderings. So we've got this. Can everyone see my screen? Can you see my screen, John? Yep, that's a beautiful rendering. That one. Yeah. So we've got this, and we've also have this as well. I mean, as you can. As you can see, I mean the the Cinema 4D engine is doing some really awesome things with RenderWorks 2011. Now I've seen some beautiful, absolutely stunning renderings um, privately. I can't show them to everybody, um, but renderings are hugely improved. the um, The quality of the light, the you know the density of the light, the the radiosity type effects, they have been improved markedly. But you know, rendering is always going to be a challenge. If you've got a slow computer, doesn't matter what you do. Um, I found that I've, I've been playing with um, custom renderworks with low options. There's a real quick way of setting everything to low, and you still get pretty good effects and very quickly. Well, that's about all I've got, Frank. All right. Well, uh, I want to thank uh, thank you, John, um, for that awesome presentation. I'm sure everyone found it as fascinating as I did. Uh, and I want to thank everyone else out there for uh, coming out to the very special kickoff webinar for the Best of the Best series brought to you by Novedge. Um, if you're unfamiliar with Novedge, uh, we're the leading online design superstore. Uh, not only do we have the lowest prices around, but our friendly and knowledgeable staff is only a phone call away, ready to answer any questions you might have. Um, as a matter of fact, I wanted to draw everyone's attention to, uh, you can still see my screen, to uh, another way that, that Novedge is um, fostering a, a really um, creative and collaborative community, and that's uh, vector working. It's a community online, free to, free to sign up, really easy to sign up for uh, design professionals, design students. Uh, all based around um, Vectorworks. Actually, John is a is a proud member of Vectorworking, and he's one of our most active members. So um, that right there is 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 incentive to kind of collaborate, communicate, uh, and and share with the rest of the community. But we're also uh, kind of a, a one stop shop for the latest information, trends, news, videos, tutorials, events, uh, anything VW related. You can find it on Vectorworking. Again, that's Vectorworking.com. Um, if any of you guys have any questions about uh, the webinar series or vector working, um, feel free to give me a, a, an email. My email is frank at novedge.com. Um, I'll be happy to answer any questions you might have. Also, want to remind everyone that the next 
uh, webinar and this series is going to be two weeks from now, September 29th, and we'll be going through uh, green designing for industrial design uh, with the Sustainable Mind software. So uh, that'll be September 29th, 11 o'clock. We'll be shooting out another um, email to, to remind you in about a week or so. Um, yeah, and if you want to keep up to date on any of uh, the best of the best webinar series, you can cruise over to novedge.com slash webinar series and uh, stay up to date on what we're doing. Uh, thanks again, John. Thank you all for uh, coming out. We'll see you next time. Thanks a lot, Frank. Bye. All right. See ya.